Photoshop has merged with AI technology and is creating amazing results. This is very different from all the other AI generators that have become popular recently. It gives you the ability to integrate with practical uses. Photoshop is using AI from Adobe Firefly that has been trained on Adobe stock assets, giving users the best results. I will go over four ways that you can implement Photoshop and AI in your design workflow. But first, you will have to install the program. Open Adobe Creative Cloud app. Click on the beta app on the left bar. From there, you will install the Photoshop beta application. I'm gonna start off with an exterior render. So the basics are you use the lasso tool to draw out a form or a shape that you're trying to add. And then you type in a prompt using the generative fill AI technology. It'll give you about three options within seconds. But some tips that I have are make sure when you draw with the lasso tool, the form resembles the form of the object you're creating. Now you can do boxes and kind of generalize the shape and the object, but to get the most accurate results, you need to make sure that when you're drawing a tree, it accurately represents that form. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the background. As you can see, it kind of removed everything around the house, but what I want is to use the masking tool to add um, the trees and the landscape that I want to keep, but still keep the sky removed. And then what I'm going to do is select that empty space and just type in partly cloudy sky to give me some more realistic options for that sky that I wasn't having before. And as you can see, it gives me three pretty good options and I just need to fill in a couple of the little missing spots from the masking tool. But other than that, it filled in really great and you can't even tell the difference. Next, I'm gonna expand the image. Um, all you have to do is increase the canvas size, select that open area and either leave it blank or type in a prompt and it'll fill it in if you want to remove objects, all you have to do is use um, the remove tool in this program. You just select it um, with the mouse and it starts to hide the objects. This tool is great for interior renderings. It allows you to add objects like books, um, people. Right now there's a good amount of furniture in this rendering, but you can remove it and change it. Um, given the tools that Photoshop with AI has provided. But you can also change materials. So let's say you don't like that all white ceiling. You can add some wooden material to part of the rendering. But if you don't like a certain design that you created, you can go in, um, click on the layer and change the result and regenerate it. Within seconds, it'll change your dog into a cat, which is pretty crazy. Another pretty amazing use for this program is to turn a screenshot of a blank 3D model and start to render it real time without having to take it into software programs like Lumion and Twinmotion, which take hours and days to add in assets and materials. Right here, you just select the floor plate that you want type in the materials and the characteristics you want it to have. And very quickly, it'll give you a highly rendered image and setting. So much better and so much faster, especially when you're low on time. Some of the footage got lost, so I'm just gonna show a bunch of the layers added together on top of each other and see how they can come together for a very great composition. Now, sometimes you don't always have an idea. And so what I'm gonna do here is start to sketch out the Sahara Desert landscape and it generates a very good landscape that I can use. And then I'm gonna create a background for that. So I have the scene and the setting I'm gonna use for my building composition. And so once I have that, I'm just gonna use the rectangle selection tool and create a general form and type in the prompt um, modern beach desert style rich house with clay walls and what this gives me is several different iterations that I don't necessarily like so I try it again and it gives me even more results I changed up the prompt a little bit 
This is the building I decided to stick with, but I felt like it still needed an addition to it. And as you can see, the different iterations of the, the building addition start to adjust with the shadow and the lighting of the area, but also scenery around it starts to compose itself around the new building addition. When adding plants and objects, the scene will generally adjust variations so it can fit and feel more realistic within the setting as well. I added some water features to show the capabilities of this as well as um, including some cars like a Jeep. as well as adding some people for scale of the image. This was a very quick and easy way to compose renderings that give you more control over the final outcome compared to a mid journey and dolly. I am continuing to work on this rendering I showed earlier. There's still a lot of potential and more things that I can add and fix before this composition is complete. I added a creek in the front and a rocky edge around it just to start to build different elements inside of the composition. I wanted to change the material and the color of the roof, but I was having a little bit trouble with the visibility so you want to make sure you keep an eye on your layer organization. Sometimes if you're not careful, layers might get hidden underneath each other. And now you can see the impact that it has. Now I kind of adjusted the, the front window to give it more reflection and make it fit with the adjusted scenery. but the patio roof above seemed a little bit out of place, so I decided to fill it in. Surprisingly, AI did a great job with the generative fill tool to complete the roof, and it really made the building come together. Now I wanted to expand the canvas and select um, the new space to be filled in. The context will be expanded even if you use an empty prompt but more detail will be added to the composition when you start to add prompts and text to it. As you can see, it just fills in perfectly. It's like this was the original size meant for this drawing. I had some trouble adding a pond to the left side of the image, but I was able to work through those issues by being more specific with the prompt, but also drawing better forms with the lasso tool. This will help inform better outcomes when you're using Photoshop AI. And to finish things off, just go to the adjustments tab and adjust the presets and coloration. To give the image a high quality finish, you must finalize the color grading. The best way to get ahead in the industry is to know these tools. So make sure you subscribe and welcome to the grind.